Well, it's official. 2022 is coming to an end. And it was a great year for tech. We got the Steam Deck. We got some new graphics cards. But you know what? It's time to move forward. Let's talk about the hardware that's happening in 2023. Welcome to Mike Text It Out. I'm Mike, and we're going to talk about some of the things I'm most excited for in 2023. Now, some of this is speculation as these products have not yet been confirmed, but it's likely we could see or hear about some of these products in 2023. Now, let's start it off with the rumored PS5 Slim. Now, my relationship with the PS5 has been turbulent, to say the least. I did sell my PS5 this year, after all, but I'm still interested to see what Sony does. One thing we know is that they've been shrinking that gigantic cooler inside the PS5 and making it more efficient in the more recent revisions. It's been rumored that Sony may release a PS5 Slim, and it makes sense considering next November it will be the third year that the system has been on the market. Also, the PS5 is just huge. It's one of those things you have to make space for, and standing it up in a lot of situations is out of the question. So considering that they've been shrinking the cooler anyway, I think it's likely that we'll at least get an announcement of a slimmer PS5 by the end of 2023. One thing we know is coming from Sony in 2023 is the DualSense Edge. Obviously, I won't be buying it, but I am interested to see what people have to say about it once it's released. Microsoft has basically been the only console manufacturer making a high-end controller for years now, so I'm interested to see what Sony's take on it is. I think it's cool to have the replaceable thumbstick modules, and it has the back paddles similar to the Xbox Elite controller. There have been reports that the battery life might be slightly worse than the regular PS5 controller, which I don't know how much worse it could possibly get. Like, does it just not turn on? Is it only a wired controller? Okay, let me just stop. Let me stop throwing the shade. Let's just move on. Let's move right on to that PSVR 2, baby. Woo! Now, I know that the price tag is high. In fact, it's more expensive than the system itself, but I think the features it comes with are comparable to other high-end headsets in the PC market, and they're introducing things like haptic feedback, which currently isn't in any consumer VR headsets. And it also has eye tracking and a way higher resolution, and it connects with one cable. Anyone who experienced the nightmare that was the breakout box for the PSVR 1 and the PS4 is super excited to not have to deal with that anymore. Plus, Sony has already locked down some exclusives like the RE4 remake, RE Village, and Horizon Call of the Mount. That sets it apart from some of the VR competition on PC, and I can't wait to see how it compares to other high-end headsets on the market. All right, with all that Sony business out the way, let's talk about the things that I might actually buy, starting with the GPD-1-4. There is currently an Indiegogo campaign for the Win4 and it'll go out to backers in March of next year. Presumably it'll be available sometime after that for everyone else to purchase. Early units have already gone out to some YouTube channels and it seems like it improves on everything from the Win3, especially performance since it moved to the Ryzen 6800U and it has the option for 32 gigs of RAM. And unlike GPD's previous claims, which you won't get too much into, with the Win3, the Win4 will actually be more powerful than the Steam Deck it can run Steam OS as well as Windows, plus it has eGPU support thanks to USB 4. Plus, AMD's gaming drivers, even in Windows, are way better than Intel, so it should have less compatibility issues due to game drivers, so I'm super excited for that. Also, the new design reminds me a lot of the PSP, which is personally one of my favorite handhelds. Let's just hope the thumbsticks stay on this time, GPD. This might be my one device to rule them all for next year, and I can't wait to see it in action. Finally, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch. Let's just be honest here. In March of 2023, the Switch will be six years old. It's practically in kindergarten now. And aside from that, it was already running an older NVIDIA Tigra chip from a couple years before it came out. I think it's time to upgrade. Now, I don't think it's likely we'll see Nintendo's new system released next year, but I do expect it to at least get announced with the performance issues that Pokemon suffered. It feels like it's time for new hardware. Now, a lot of that is on the developer Game Freak because other devs have made their games work on the Switch. I mean, Nintendo launched with Breath of the Wild, which also launched on Wii U, which of course is less powerful than the Switch, but you can't argue that having more power would be helpful. 
Now, hopefully we can also see some improved Joy-Cons with better thumbsticks so we don't have to deal with these drift issues. Also, I'm just all around interested in how Nintendo handles their next system. I think it would be cool if they launched with two versions with a cheaper one being handheld only like the Switch Lite. And I also hope they keep the OLED screen for the main model. And I also hope to hear from you in the comments and what tech you're looking forward to in 2023. Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend Tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification to get notified when I drop a video. And always remember to do at least two things at the same time. See you next year.